Hello fellow Stitchers, I'm Annie of Annie's Keepers. Here is how I use our new system of floss and fiber management we call Annie's Keepers. The heart of the system is the Thread Keeper, a small acrylic tab with a hole in each end and a groove just under the top hole. Attach a round permanent label to each side of the Thread Keeper. These labels are not easily available elsewhere. We provide more than enough. Write the fiber number or name on each side. Cut your fiber to the length you wish to use and insert it into the bottom hole. Secure it with a loose knot. Your fiber is now identified throughout the project and on into storage. You will always know just what it is. When you have completed loading all your thread keepers for a project, you may place them on a ring and use the fibers as needed. You can see why it is handy to have the labels on both sides of the thread keepers. You can easily see the labels no matter which way you turn it. Another choice is to slide the thread keepers onto a project slide, which holds 16 thread keepers. I do it in numerical order, but you can use any order that meets your needs. If you use the project slide, you can get some removable labels from any office supply store. Draw the symbol for each fiber on a label and attach that label on top of the permanent label. Then, when you are following your pattern, you can look at your project slide and see just what you need. The removable labels come off easily at the end of the project. If you use all the fiber in a thread keeper and need to refill it, you can remove the thread keeper from the project slide by twisting it slightly and giving it a little pull. It will come right out. You don't need to take out all the other thread keepers to get at it. It goes back in the same way. When it is in the right place, you will hear a little snap. The thread keepers stay securely in the project slide, and when children or pets knock it on the floor, you can pick it up and they are all still in the right place. Here is how I use the needle keeper. Write your fiber numbers and symbols in the spaces provided in the heavy paper strip. As you can see, we have marked the spaces on both sides of the strip. The strip then slides into the dovetailed slot on the top of the needle keeper and lines up with the lines on the cushion bar. You can then load as many needles as you like. Putting the needles in the space on the cushion bar, which is just above the identifying number and symbol. If you like, you can put your project slide into the deeper dovetailed slot on the front of the needle keeper. You will want to use the same order for your fibers on both the needle keeper strip and the project slide so your fibers line up with the filled needles. It is handy to have thread keepers in line with the filled needles as you can put the strands of your fiber which are not yet loaded into needles, right back into the thread keeper, as when you are using fewer strands than come in the floss. This is how it looks when you use the removable labels with the large symbols. Again, if children or pets knock this on the floor, it all stays together. The project slide does not fall out of the needle keeper, and the needles don't fall out either. If you are taking your project with you on a trip or visit, obviously you can't take it with you with all the needles sticking up. However, the needles can be inserted sideways into the cushion bar. It is slightly higher than the frame and allows room for this position. I put the needle keeper in one plastic bag and the project slide into another bag and put them both in my traveling bag along with my project.
Here is how the storage system works. When you are finished with a project, you can place the thread keepers with the unused fiber onto a storage slide. It is much like the project slide, but it has hooks on the ends. These hooks fit into a hanging file box. Here is mine. I use a plastic hanging file box because it is easy to handle. You might already have one, or they are easily found at variety stores or office supply stores. A metal file box would also work. We recommend against a wooden or cardboard box. Wood and cardboard absorb moisture and emit acid, which can damage your fiber. We are all very careful to use acid-free matting when we frame our finished work, and it is just as important not to have your unused fiber in contact with wood or cardboard. We provide labels for the storage slides. When you are putting the label on the storage slide, it helps to make a little crease in the label with your thumbnail where it goes over the edge of the storage slide. The label has room to write on both the top and the front of the storage slide. Here is a filled storage slide, DMC 162 to 224. There are some missing because I am using them in a project. The thread keepers come in and out of the storage slide just like they do in the project slide. In my box, I have 750 different fibers. You probably don't have that many, or perhaps you don't want to transfer everything you have at once. If you have extra room in your box, you can get plastic hanging file folders and put extra fabric or patterns in them. You can keep and use all kinds of fiber this way. Here is silk. Rainbow Gallery Metallic, Krennic Metallic, Wool for Cruel, and my favorite, Pearl Cotton for Hardongo or whatever else you use it for. An entire ball of Pearl Cotton will fit into a thread keeper, both Anchor and DMC. If you use a bag system, you can just drop the thread keeper with the fiber on it into its bag and it is always identified and ready to use. More than once before I had the thread keepers, I put my floss into the wrong bag. I have a box of mystery floss from those days, but no more. Some of you like the bobbin system. That doesn't work for me because I like to thread needles in advance and cut all my floss at once. It doesn't go back on the bobbin very well for me, and I don't like the kinks in my fiber from the bobbin. You can just drop your thread keeper and fiber right into the same space where the bobbins go using the same numbering system. We'd like you to support your local needle workshop. Where would we be without these wonderful, knowledgeable people? Ask your local shop for our new line. If you do not have a shop nearby, you can order from Nordic Needle. If your local shop would like to order these for you, they can visit our website under Dealer Inquiries for wholesale support, or Nordic Needle will also support your local shop. We think you will have more ideas about how to use this very flexible system once you get started with it. Please write us on our website and tell us how you use Annie's Keepers so we can share your ideas with others. Happy stitching.